proposal is for a new uh, building containing a range of uses, including a theatre, cafe, museum, offices, and residential. And it includes a tower rising to a maximum of 30 storeys or 105 metres. Uh, the application is recommended for refusal for the 10 reasons on the updated draft decision notice which you have on your addendum report. The changes are really just uh, minor drafting uh, corrections. The site is currently used as a surface car park, so as an underused brownfield site which makes no positive contribution to the area, it is one which we would welcome being redeveloped. And you can see the site on page 13 of your pack. The range of uses, that is the theatre, the offices, the museum, the restaurant uh, and the residential would be appropriate in this area which sits within the central activity zone, a town centre, an opportunity area and also the strategic cultural area. The National Planning Policy Framework, the NPPF, uh, contains a presumption in favour of sustainable development, especially that which supports the economy or provides housing. However, the MPPF does go on to say that this support should be withheld where there are adverse impacts that significantly and demonstrably outweigh those benefits. And this is the case with this proposal, and I'll go on to describe the impacts and the harm that is caused. Uh, as I said previously, the rocket-shaped tower rises to 30 storeys, and the site is not within one of the locations defined as suitable for tall buildings in the core strategy. It's outside of the area uh, of London Bridge, which is restricted to the area more closely surrounding the station. As the core strategy says, a tall building in the wrong place can be overbearing and out of character, and that is uh, most certainly the case here. And Safe Select Plan Policy uh, 3.20, which you hear a lot about at this committee, sets out the design requirements for tall buildings, including that they make positive contributions to the public realm, uh, positive contributions to the skyline, and of the highest architectural quality. The report uh, that you have sets out the critique of the design, the, in the inappropriateness of the literal office depiction, the crude detailing and lack of any local reference in the Gagarin and Russian influences, which have no relevance in Bankside. And you'll see images on pages uh, 17 onwards uh, showing you uh, some images from the submitted uh, information. This insensitive design causes harm to the skyline and the townscape and appears discordant and disruptive. The quality of the information submitted has been very poor. The site sits within the background assessment area of the strategic view of St. Paul's Cathedral from Alexander Palace, where even a small protrusion behind the dome would cause substantial harm to this celebrated landmark. It is therefore uh, critical to be able to properly understand and assess this relationship. But no verified views or accurate visual representations of the kind you would normally expect for this kind of application have been provided in this case. The small sketches which I included as page 20 on the pack are all we have uh, in the application documentation to illustrate the impact on this uh, very important strategic view. And they are, as you can see, so small and not verified that we could not rely on them uh, to make a proper assessment of the application. So the risk remains of substantial harm. And this point was also raised by Historic England in their uh, formal comments on the application. Uh, within conservation areas, policies at all levels stress the need to preserve the historic character and for the development to protect the heritage, heritage assets. The form, the detailed design, the height above the tower and the base blocks, the materials and the language of the buildings cause substantial harm to the Thrale Street Conservation Area and the setting of the Borough High Street and Union Street Conservation Areas. And these concerns have been echoed in the responses from bodies such as the Conservation Areas Advisory Group and many of the objectors. The demolition of the existing building at number 55 Southwark Street uh, has not been properly justified. And because of the serious concerns about the quality of the replacement building, uh, there would be no justification for the loss of that building. The applicant has offered no affordable housing or Section 106 contributions based on, on an assumption that with nine units, nine residential units, the scheme would not be liable. However, under the London Plan and our affordable housing SPD, if a site has capacity for more than nine units, <coughs> the developer has created unusually large units which avoid the affordable housing threshold, then they would still be expected to make an equitable contribution to affordable housing. 
In this case, the development is providing around five, uh, 2,500 square metres of residential floor space, which could, in, in a different configuration, provide perhaps around 25 to 30 units in a more conventional uh, mix and layout. Uh, the layouts of the flats that are proposed are on page 22 and 23. They're duplexes, so the two images that you have are, are a single flat combined across two floors. And because of the uh, failure to address the affordable housing needs and the affordable housing policies, uh, we have a, a suggested reason for on your draft decision notice. The applicant has suggested that the housing would cross-subsidise the theatre and the office space and allow the theatre to proceed without public subsidy. But no viability or other supporting information has been supplied and so no weight could be attributed to this issue. The building would be serviced from the rear, and so the access would come through from Union Street around Flatiron Square, uh, and the uh, servicing would take place alongside the viaduct. This part of the viaduct is the suggested route of the low-line uh, pedestrian route. We can give very little weight to the low-line at the moment, since it will first emerge as policy for the council in the new sort of plan, which is not yet out for formal consultation. But the servicing arrangement is not reassuring. It's on a third party's land, Network Rail's land, and has the potential for conflict with other users and the residential entrance for this building and doesn't create any kind of positive space or active frontage onto what hopefully will be in the future the low line. And the image of the rear of the building is on page 24. Uh, the other reasons on the draft decision notice mainly result from the quality of the information provided and the absence of a proper evidence base to underpin the assumptions that the developer has made. The quality of the submitted material limits the ability to make a rigorous and proper assessment in relation to matters such as daylight, cycle storage, transport and microclimate. So in conclusion, the harm to the historic environment and the local townscape and the London skyline is very clear and very substantial. The harm does significantly outweigh the benefits of the development, even having regard to the reuse of the land, the cultural uses and the jobs which would be created. There are no significant site constraints which would prevent a high quality development of an appropriate scale and design referencing its local area rather than Russian motifs coming forward. The applicant has not sought pre-application advice prior to the submission of the application, and our previous discussion, including a CAE presentation back in 2010 and 2011, clearly articulated at that time the scale of our concerns. And we would encourage dialogue with the landowner, but on the basis of a fresh approach, taking on board the reasons for refusal and the sentiments in the report. Uh, uh, the refusal, if you were to um, endorse that with your resolution tonight, would need to be referred to the Mayor. Uh, the GLA officers have indicated that they do share our concerns and they would not be recommending that the Mayor take over the case. Therefore, if the resolution was made here today, then it could be presented to the Mayor on Thursday and that would enable the Council to issue uh, its formal decision before the application expires next Monday. Thank you. Any questions? There are no questions. Is, uh, are there any objectives? Yes. Are objectives? Do you want to, uh, you, you obviously haven't spoken. No. Do you want to come forward and share your time? And I'll yes. split it between you equally. Yes. You tell us. I, sorry, I'm making an assumption. I assume that you, you're two together, so you get one and a half minutes. You get your one and a half minutes. And then, then we'll have the opportunity to ask you questions. And, You could all introduce yourselves first, and then you'll three, uh, then the overall three things will start. Zan Stuck, I Wilfred, uh, resident within 100 metres, no. member of the borough. And uh, Chloe Beeney, uh, local resident, and also uh, within 100 metres of the development. You need to, you need to, you need Sorry, introduce yourself. <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm Joy Grimshaw. I'm the chief executive of the charity that backs on to the development. Brilliant. Now I'll go through
Well, yeah, no, no, sorry, John's talking to me. Well, well, we're actually just here to say that we needed to be present to represent the local view and agree with the council for a change <laughs> and be able to say, you know, we like to be on top of looking at our local area and that's why the borough hood's there. So we, we want to see what your recommendations are to the applicant and understand why the applicant has actually pursued the application given the long history of negativity from the council and we, we want that clarified. Really? Your objection? Okay. Uh, my board of trustees objects very strongly. We're a health, fitness and wellbeing charity and our site, the seven story building of us at the rear of our building, uh, I think was a, a 73 to 81 suburb at Bridge Road. Yeah, we've got you. Pretty cool. Yes, that's right. Yeah, got you. Uh, the, the board thinks the site has been overdeveloped. Um, uh, the, as I say, we've got a severe five story, actually six story building. Uh, six floors of plant room. On the fourth floor, we have a women-only gym, which attracts women whose culture or religion um, or self-confidence and body image prevents them using a traditional gym. And the applicant has said he would have paid the windows, but there are also concerns that we would be observable from the roof garden on the seventh floor. The, the scale of the building in relation to us, to our building, contravenes Southwark's plan policy, the urban design, 13.3, uh, uh, the design uh, that states that buildings need to be appropriate in terms of height, scale, and massing to the local content and not dominate their surroundings appropriately. And the London policy plan at 7.7 .7, which implies that tall and large buildings relate well to the form, proportion, composition, scale, and character of the surrounding buildings. The urban grain, whatever that is, uh, and uh, the public realm. We think that the, the proposal is, does not consider its relationship to our building at all. Uh, the other thing, the, we think there's going to be quite a loss of light, a big loss of light issues. Although, with, I think within the documents that you have at page 38, there's a sun pads drawing. Uh, but that only considers the sunlight. It doesn't uh, consider the daylight. And I think some of the residents that would, that would be caused by it. So yes, we think the site's overdeveloped and doesn't bear any relationship to the, the character of the area, or the local community, or the local community and the surrounding buildings. And that's right. Right. Uh, you have, of course, read the recommendation uh, page eighty-two. Yeah. The, the, the recommendations we've made on page eighty-two give the reasons for. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, I don't know, any questions? There's no question, but thank you very much indeed for coming along to express your support for your position. Uh, is the applicant a right to Yes. Would you like to come forward? Yeah. You have three minutes. Can you introduce yourself? Yourselves, and once you've done the entire line, uh, your three minutes will start. I'm Jonathan Clownsfield from Clownsfield Owners Design Limited, and I've been working with the applicants' agents and the applicants on the scheme. Uh, Catherine Archer, Lee's Associates, we are the agents of the application. 
I'm Donald Riley. I represent the client uh, together with um, some uh, family interests because um, the client is Russian, the site is Russian, and um, there needs to be some interpret interpreting. <laughs> No, 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 actually, sign the sign machine isn't there. Your name introduced yourself as a three-minute stop. Fine. If you've got the Evening Standard tonight, you will see that the um, surprisingly successful Menier Theatre has uh, been put as the only nominee w outside WC2 for um, excellence of the year, vote for the theatre's best. Uh, Eighteen years ago, I was attended with Jonathan here, a planning meeting in which uh, a theatre, a new theatre, was welcomed into Southwark. Uh, the success of the theatre is what is now driving an application for a new theatre because uh, demand uh, has to be listened to. The demand comes from America, the demand comes from uh, Russia, and the, there is huge demand from within Britain for more space, including rehearsal rooms. Um, the first theatre, the Menier, uh, is an unsubsidized theatre and therefore uh, succeeds on its merits, bums on seats and food on the table. This particular application required the same for successful formula, uh, bums on seats and um, uh, seats, plenty of seats uh, to dine at beforehand. However, overall the economics must stack up, hence the uh, iconic tower uh, designed by Nikita Yavin, uh, a very famous Russian architect, and the vernacular, which is probably a bit uh, unusual for um, uh, English uh, sensibilities, but the, the overall vernacular is uh, undoubtedly of Russian origin. Over to the architects. Uh, assi uh, our assisting architect. If you would turn off your I think the thing which is most important to recognise about this site is that the theatre is um, building on the success of the Menier Theatre, and it's building a theatre which is over twice as big. At the moment, all the shows go to the West End. And it's extremely difficult, obviously, to build new theatres and the associated rehearsal spaces which are badly needed without a certain mass of cross-subsidisation on the site. This theatre could not be moved. We are part of Southwark Street, it is part of Southwark Street, and therefore it does need a certain amount of massing on the site to, to successfully build a new theatre. <coughs> so it's not as if we could move it to a place where we could build bigger. So we are looking for an exception of looking at the site to do this major cultural offer to the site. I think the comments about the Russian architecture they're, they're a major player, international architects. They've brought a, a sense of theatre, if you like, fantasy aside, which isn't part of Southwark Street, but that's what theatre is about. So I, I think you've got to consider what we're trying to do on the side. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, would like to make? Sarah? Um, yeah, I'd like to ask a question about the residential proposal <coughs> in the tower. Um, obviously, officers explained that it's main residential units that are duplexes, so over two storeys, um, but that a more efficient use of the site could be achieved in terms of residential accommodation. Could you just provide some more information as to whether further residential units were considered and the reasons why you propose not? I didn't answer that at all. Uh, it just makes it easier for everyone to hear. Yes. The accommodation on the site is not only for the theatre, but also, so, and that includes the, the rehearsal rooms, uh, of which um, uh, the largest was designed uh, to help the national and to help the um, Old Vic and a number of other South Bank theatres to uh, accommodate their shows. At the moment, they rehearse in um, difficult circumstances and from time to time use uh, the many chocolate factories <laughs> rehearsal spaces which have columns, which is clearly not satisfactory. So the way the site fitted together 
uh, included uh, commercial space, significant amount of commercial space. Now, of course, that could be removed and substituted by residential space, but on the other hand, <coughs> commercial space provides jobs. And the site and the activity on this particular site and some of the adjacent sites uh, shows there's just a huge continuous demand for commercial, commercial space. So, bearing in mind the tower was always going to be um, controversial. It was made as slim as possible um, in keeping with uh, the, the, the width of the 74th floor of the shard. That's approximately the waistline of it. And it is no fatter than the tape chimney. So, yes, if there'd be more possibility for creating more residential space on the site, clearly we'd, we'd, we'd have gone for it. But um, that would have meant taking out the commercial space and reducing the effectiveness not only of our activity on the, on the site, uh, but other people. For example, rents have gone up from uh, £25 a square foot two years ago to £40 plus a square foot, eliminating all kinds of certain commercial activities from Bankside. Um, my supplementary is, as I understood, the issue is about how large the residential units are within the proposed town, not finding the opportunity to deliver residential accommodation where other uses are being proposed, but that the units being proposed in the town are exceptionally large and that there could be more efficient use of that space by delivering more residential units. So the question I was asking was, was there a reason why the residential units being proposed are so large and why smaller units weren't whether smaller units were considered within that residential space. There was um, quite a bit of discussion with an operator of an apart hotel um, who wondered whether he might run this as uh, not budget accommodation but reasonable accommodation for uh, visitors. Uh, one third of our uh, many uh, visitors to see shows are Americans because perhaps a quarter of the shows are successful in American shows. Uh, Funny Face will be coming up for Christmas, uh, starring um, Sheridan Smith. Uh, we've just had a sellout, the Baccarat season, and the Baccarat show is going to the West End, and, and where Americans actually stay in London to see Bert Baccarat. So there was, at one time, some discussion, and it, it's still feasible for the future, that some of the accommodation would be used for actors and actors who are visiting, together with um, uh, some, some... Can I, can I help you focus on the question? Uh, on page 84 yeah. of, the, uh, of the papers, point four on the reasons, uh, the application does not make any provision for affordable housing, and that's what we're concentrating on, I believe. Um, and the, uh, the applicant has not demonstrated that private housing is required to uh, cross-subsidise the office and theatre uses, and that this would deliver benefits to uh, greater weight than affordable housing. Oh, no, demonstrated. Although the development provides only nine dwellings, the size of these dwellings, <coughs> square meters means that the building will have the capacity to provide more than 10 units. Therefore, why aren't you providing more units and therefore, well, we would then make the assumption that it could provide more than 10 units and therefore it would accrue an affordable housing uh, element. And the question is, why did you not think of actually exceeding the nine dwellings uh, when you could quite clearly um, provide more? There's a demand, a clear demand for that size of uh, dwelling. Thank you. Is that sufficient? Yes. Hotel. Family do if, if it's not a part hotel, it's, it's family dwellings. Three to four bedrooms. Mm. 
the Thank you, Chair. Um, the officers have uh, suggested that um, they that you haven't come, you haven't provided information on a whole raft of uh, areas uh, where the information hasn't been detailed enough, um, and that you haven't sought pre-application advice. And I presume that they must have told you some time ago that they weren't happy with uh, with what had been proposed. And I just wondered why um, you. If that is, if it's the case that you haven't provided everything that you were asked for, and if it is the case, uh, if that is the case, uh, why, why did you not work with officers a little bit more uh, on? Sorry. Well, more fruitfully. Yes. Well, the Russian dynamic. The Russian. First of all, the Russian dynamic was leading this particular design. That's absolutely crystal clear. And um, secondly, I suppose, um, following in the boots of um, Sam Warnermaker, who uh, had huge resistance from Southwick Council um, before he got planning permission and cancer uh, from his worry, I thought I'm not going to worry myself to I'm not going to worry myself to an early grave by taking on uh, information that, if I transfer it to Russia, is not going to make quite a lot. Uh, it's not going to make difference at this stage when they had a, uh, a clear vision for this particular site. After all, it was Russian money that had originally um, updated and saved the Menier building. Nobody knew about the Menier building until the Russians had begun to um, <coughs> refurbish it. And it wasn't until there was a visit of French industrial archaeologists that this became clear that it was in French terms, an iconic building. In local terms, a building with the roof off. Let's focus on the why you didn't listen to the advice you were given by officers. Why didn't the Russians? Why didn't the Russians? They had their own. They had their own ideas. This is the first. Brilliant. It's the first. first that's what I said. That's an answer. It's the, As we have ideas too. It's their first new commercial building to be designed since 1970, 1916, 1917. In uh, in London, and it's okay. interesting that it's in Surrey. Oh, it is. Um, and <laughs> I, 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 all I would do is suggest that they talk to us. Um, can I just can I just, I, oh, yes, can I just add that in terms of the processing of this particular application, we've answered every question that's been asked. Well, it's puzzled more than you think. Hamish, uh, just talking about what you actually just said there. Um, can I? Oh, so you, you just said um, there's a clear Russian dynamic, um, and it's uh, uh, the, the, the first building to be built by to be designed. designed to be designed. Sorry, in this in this or way, in, built. In, in, yeah, <laughs> that point. Uh, uh, to, be, uh, to be designed uh, for London uh, in many years um, from from kind of Russia. Um, can you just explain why, uh, what, what led to the design um, and to the sites? Um, can, can, can you explain why you're at, at the position you're at in terms of the rocket-shaped building? Uh, Nikita Yarvin made a visit, the head of Studio 44, uh, to uh, London and gave a presentation, which I gather you were present, and he outlined uh, the instincts and the inspiration that comes from uh, Russian iconostry, meaning symbolism, and there is a lot of symbolism reflected in that uh, building that is very, very meaningful to, uh, to Russians. And not, not just uh, the symbolism of a Gagarin rocket, although that is something terribly important uh, for them, their um, Gagarin's daughter uh, visited the site when she was in London, when she unveiled the uh, statue of her father and endorsed this uh, particular design, like the Kolokolchik triangulation, which is inspired from, uh, goes way back to, to designs inspired by 14th century invasions from Tata. Mongolia. So it is quite iconic. Could you turn off your mic? We have to play ping pong with the 
Yeah, so I was going to... Uh, a connected but, but separate question, which is about the height um, overall of the, the building. Uh, the officer made a comment about the um, about the uh, the, the, the uh, skyline and the uh, the impact that it might have on uh, protected views, in particular in regard to some calls. Um, uh, your agent just said that you'd responded to every request for information that you'd had. Although I felt that the officer would give me the impression that you. The information provided in that regard hasn't been as um, uh, detailed as have been requested. Can you, um, just for the sake of clarity, just explain in terms of the hype overall, whether you feel it's in keeping with the um, uh, the planning policies and, and the neighbouring surroundings, um, and then secondly, in terms of the um, the the, uh, the skyline and the, the restricted uh, protected views, um, whether it's impacting on any of them. Just as quick, and you might want to elaborate. Catherine deals more with uh, consultants who must uh, provide uh, a service to architects, as I'm defined, although we pay, we have to sign off for what is being done. And there was a uh, skyline uh, projection analysis done by a company, by a firm of consultants, to ensure that the tower being as soon as it was, would fit behind St. Paul's, would not damage the St. Paul's <coughs> from Alexander Palace, and that its height also would not compromise uh, the view. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that query wasn't specifically raised, but if we had been asked the question, please can you um, prove to us that it will not affect that view, then we would have provided that information in the course of the, the long course of this application. We weren't asked to specifically answer that point. How, how much interaction did you have? Some months, wasn't it? Uh, the application was first submitted uh, December last year, and it's been a very slow process. Every time we've been asked to respond with information, we've done very rapidly. And we haven't really had it, any complaints that we haven't answered all the questions once that has been submitted. We've had very little verbal communication with the planning officers, which has been a little bit difficult, a little bit disappointing from on our behalf. One of the parts of the question that I'd ask was about your your um, your feelings as to the uh, shootability of the height and the design in the within the surroundings of the area in regard to both policy and sort of just personal uh, you know, view of its impact. Well, we tested, sorry, we did test <laughs> this, this um, idea uh, of a Gagarin rocket on, on um, the great and the good. Um, I can say without qualification that um, that was like uh, who in the theatre world and like and like me a theatre large and in your face and like a theatrical entrance to begin when you get into the street like visiting Shaftesbury Avenue were all in favour. So this was Tom Stoppard, uh, Conti, um, the uh, Trevor, so Trevor Nunn. We had a show with Andrew Lloyd Webber. He liked it. And the reaction from the head of uh, the council, Peter John, was, go for it, I like it, tremendous. And that was four years ago. Because we, 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 we didn't come up with an iconic symbol that would become as um, interesting and as debatable as uh, the top of the shard or um, the Oxo Tower or um, the Post Office Tower or, or something else, and it would give off steam occasionally during celebrations, um, like um, Russians and the, and, the, and the British welcoming uh, uh, yet another convoy through the Murmansk, because it, you may know that the Murmansk um, and we, we now celebration moving off the plane. Well, uh, there is a Russian. So the of land, there is a Russian. There is a Russian pre presence every. The history of the, uh, <laughs> there is a Russian. Russian 
British relationships. Uh, There's a big Russian presence every year on the on the Belfast. They do. I know. <laughs> hmm. Right, Kieran, have you got a question? So, which is just to say, do you believe that this is a suitable development for the place that you're proposing to build it? Are you looking at architects or all of us? We say yes. Yes. And do you say that in policy terms as well as your personal opinion? How well, planning policy terms? It has to be considered an exceptional one-off design for theatre land. Um, it's not quiche in the sense of being, a, you know, Disney or, 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 or Lego land. It is, it has been crafted to fulfil its function internally, provide wonderful outdoor space, albeit on the first floor terrace, an open terrace. Um, okay. Uh, I think we move the exhausted questions. Turn off your mic. I mean, as you've described the disappointment that you've had in relating to the offices here, the report quite clearly expresses a series of disappointments about your engagement in terms of the planning issues that come up, and I'd, I'd refer you to page 63. Is that, are, are the comments there, is there any, anything in those comments that jumps out and says that is absolutely wrong, and I want short answers, because it does seem to be a, 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 a list of issues yeah. Oh, is it not? Sorry. I, got it. I do apologise, Michael. Can't see that part. But there is a, on page 63, item, um, paragraphs uh, 162 to 172, conclusion on planning issues, and there are a series of uh, uh, comments there which express the disappointment that. Uh, officers have had here in terms of the uh, the level of engagement around the uh, quality of the information that's been uh, provided and of uh, the the issue in terms of our appreciation of land use and where is the right place and wrong place for a building of your of the nature you're placing rather than where a Russian might think or a, uh, an architect might think it go. Um, but, but there has been very little discussion around formulating a compromise around the basic tenet of a theatre. Um, and I'm writing my sort of assessment on this, and is there anything briefly you would want to say if I've got it wholly wrong? You've been president of all these meetings, Charles, haven't you? I'm sorry. I, I think that there's some... What I've seen at the meetings from the start is that we, we didn't find we had any encouragement at all from the planning team, and, and it, it felt hostile, and I think that's probably one of the difficulties we've had is that the engagement from our side has been wholly negative. Are you were aware that, that the council's... Sorry. You were aware that the, the, you, from those meetings that this was not an appropriate development for this site. Well, I, I, I've always felt it's very difficult with Southwark's plan is that they're trying to look at ideal situations, and so where, where you're looking for tall buildings in certain places, you're trying to encourage things. It's far more difficult where you've got a place which needs encouragement, which mm -hmm. is site specific, where you need more mass on the site. It doesn't fit into the plan, and what we I'd always hoped that you would feel that the cultural offer, which is significant, would actually allow you to see that it would be something very good to have on that site. I think the same issues having been to Paris this summer, having had a relook at the Beaubourg Centre, which is massively out of scale for that, but brilliant building, the same issues came up there. Okay, now, uh, I 
Are there any further questions? If there are no further questions, thank you very much indeed. Are there any further questions of the officers? Any further questions? Any further questions of the officers? Do you know? Thank you, Chair. Now, the applicants. Oh, no. <coughs> oh, God, is there a oh, God, yeah. I, I, I'm losing myself. I'm losing myself. Um, do, do, is there a supporter who lives within 100 metres of the site? Is there a ward council who lives within. I'm a supporter. I live within 100 metres. Uh, you're the, the, applicant, the applicant's agent. You don't get two guns. Is there a ward council? No. Are there any questions of the officers that uh, would want to clarify it? So I've got Jamil and so Thank you, Chair. Now, the applicants raised concerns that there wasn't much engagement between the officers and the applicants and guidance. What's the process? Um, you know, do they have to get pre-application advice to get some um, advice from the officers or can they make an application and they'll still get advice um, on the application? Okay. Uh, this is quite an unusual circumstance for us for a major application. Uh, just going back to the advice in 2011, uh, we concluded our letter by saying, uh, as I said previously, that's Gary Rice, uh, we would welcome the opportunity to work through the issues with you and your client, but it needs to be recognised that the current form of the scheme would need to change considerably before it could be found acceptable. I'd be happy to meet with you again, but this would need to be in the context of a fresh look at the site. That was in 2011. We heard no more from them until, I think it was December, when the application arrived. So we'd had no uh, pre-discussions. We then spent around six months uh, getting it to a state where we could validate it because the original information was so uh, lacking that it wasn't our valid. And the question which I've discussed with the applicant, uh, many now exchanges with the applicant, uh, sorry, with the agent, um, James Jago, about the difference between the quality of the information needed to validate an application and the quality of the information needed to make a proper and good, safe, positive decision on an application. And that's where the difference between us lies. Once we have a live application, we have 13 weeks to determine it, uh, and we are expected to determine it based on the information that we have. Uh, so we have sought some clarifications from them, uh, but given that we felt this scheme was so far from being something that we would be able to support, there seemed to be no real merit in entering protracted negotiations. We'd made our position quite clear at the pre-application stage. They hadn't sought to moderate their position, or in fact the tariff at all since 2011. Uh, so we've done what is the, the correct thing, which is to bring it to you as soon as we can to make a decision. Is there a question anyone else had? Has anyone else got another question? Are we happy to go to a decision? I was going to say that. I was going to say, if we were happy to go to a decision, is there any comments that anyone would like to make that haven't been previously made in the questioning? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I think it's a great shame, actually, because I uh, love the idea of having a tower that isn't one of the boring, bland towers that have so often been approved at this planning committee. Um, you know, some of them close to conservation areas. I, I live in a conservation area. I step out of my front door and I see a number of towers uh, surrounding it. Um, and we have recently approved things. And I think it's a great shame that... that this hasn't been a refined enough proposal because I think it would have been an exciting, potentially an exciting proposal if it had been the right height and if it had ticked a lot of boxes, which clearly it hasn't. Uh, and the fact that there are so many reasons for refusal, I think, is, you know, makes it quite clear that it, that it absolutely doesn't tick enough boxes. But I just think it's a great shame uh, that, that an, an innovative and potentially exciting project like this can't be accommodated in Southwark. I would I wholly agree, and I think uh, there, there is a, you know, there, there are the right sites for exciting architecture that can be iconic and can accommodate uh, the sorts of aspirations that some some developers and some inspirational architects wish to uh, accommodate. And, we, and, I, and I think that it is disappointing, um, and I think it's particularly disappointing when. Um, Developers um, don't spend enough time in the pre-application 
uh, uh, period to actually iron out some of those issues. Because I think, a bit like yourself, I think something quite interesting could have occurred on that site, but within the context of where it is. There is also, you know, there are other sites where something interesting could have happened with those sorts of heights. Um, but the two didn't happen, which is, as I say, is, is disappointing. I wouldn't want it to be seen as a, we are anti, I think we are pro, but in the right place. Um, so if we're happy to go to a decision, is it as on paper? Is that seconded? Yeah, Kieran, I got it that time. Uh, and those in agreement with, for the refusal, please indicate. Those uh, against? Those abstaining. So two abstentions. Sadly, it's refused on the green screen. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you all very much indeed.